بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب في الله continue on in our study of Riyadh Salihin the chapter Kitab al-Fadha'il the chapter of strict orders for observance of the obligatory Salat. We mentioned some of the Ahadith, or Imam al mentioned some of the Ahadith which illustrate for us the importance of this great pillar in Islam, which is the second pillar of Islam. And we reach the Hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'an <coughs> radiallahu ta'an وعن معاذ رضي الله تعالى عنه قال بعثني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من اليمن فقال إنك تأتي قوم من أهل الكتاب فادعوهم إلى شهادتي أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله فإن أطاعك لذلك فاعلمهم أن الله تعالى افترض عليهم خمس صلوات في كل يوم وليلة فإن هم أطاعوك أطاعوا لذلك فاعلمهم أن الله تعالى افترض عليهم صدقة تأخذ من أغنيائهم وترد على فقرائهم فإن هم أطاعوا لذلك فإياك وكرائم وكرائم أموال أموالهم واتق الدعوة المظلوم فإنه ليس بينها وبين الله حجاب متفق عليه إن هذا الحديث فحديث معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه who said who reported the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم sent me as a governor to Yemen and at the time of departure he instructed me thus he said, you will go to the people of the scripture, meaning the Jews and the Christians. First of all, invite them to testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. And if they accept this, then tell them that Allah has enjoined upon them five salat during the day and the night. And if they accept it, then tell them that Allah has made the payment of zakat obligatory upon them. It should be collected from their rich and distributed among their poor. And if they agree to it, then do not take uh, their best of their properties for distribution of zakat. And then he said, beware of the supplications of the oppressed. For verily, there is no barrier between it and Allah. Ru'ahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith, this famous hadith, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was sent to Yemen to give the people of the book da'wah, the people of Ahli Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh to share with him the message of Islam, which is shows us, first and foremost, our duty to give the message of Islam to the world. That we should be vigilant in sharing the beauty and the muhasana of Islam. The beauty of Islam through our conduct, through our preaching, through our manners. That so much so that the people should be, their hearts should be open to Islam if nothing else, if they have an, if they don't accept it. So Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala was sent by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Yemen to teach Ahlul Kitab about the book that shows us the importance of knowledge of Ilm because Mu'ad was an Alam he was an Alam from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the responsibility of calling to Allah Azza wa Jal and that can only come with Ilm مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يَفَقَوْ فِي الدِّينِ Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge and understanding, or of understanding of uh, of the Islam of Islam. So Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala was entrusted with this knowledge, 
And the Prophet وسلم, said, he didn't say the first thing you should do is, is put a bomb in their church or put a bomb in their masjid or something crazy like we see today what's going on inside and outside of our community. <clears throat> but rather he said, verily you're going to the people of the book. So call them to the Shahada. Call them to Tawheed. Call them to the Kalima to Tawheed. Call them to La ilaha illallah. Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Call them to the Shahadatain. Call them to Islam. Call them to remove themselves from shirk and come to the light of Islam. Min dhulmatil nur From darkness to light. And he said, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So of course we know we have to adhere to the commandments of Allah as commanded in his book, Kitabillah, Wa Sunnatul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through the actions, the speech, the manners, those things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, that that is his Sunnah, and that's what we're ordered with, and that's what the people of the book were ordered with that. Nothing more than that. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And they were commanded except to worship Allah alone. And to Him is the, is the religion. For Him is the religion. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's ikhlas, it's sincerity to Allah. That's the kalima to tawheed. That's the urwa to wuthka that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an. So He said, and if they obey you in this, so if they accept Islam, if they accept this, this, this simple commandment, if they die upon that, then they, they go to Jannah, paradise. So if they accept this and they live, then give them the next thing which is of utmost importance, and that's the shahid of this hadith, فَإِنْ أَطَاعُوا فَإِنْ أَطَاعُوا لِذَلِكَ فَاعْلَمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتِ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ Then you should tell them that Allah has made it an obligation upon them that there are the five daily prayers in the day and the night. So the shahid here, the reason Imam Anoa, we mentioned that in this bab, in this chapter, was to let us know the importance of what? It goes back to the title of the bab, the importance of the obligatory salat. So letting us know that after the shahadatain, the most important pillar of Islam is what? Is salat. That's why leaving the salat, being lazy to the salat, is such a grievous sin. And as we'll soon find out, in accordance with other ahadith, we see that uh, it is classified as kufr, as leaving the religion. And the scholars of fiqh, the fuqaha, they differ within that regard, but we want to understand the seriousness. Would you, do you prefer to be in a, si a situation where you are at least, you're knowing and acknowledging your duty and you're doing your duty, you're doing your prayer? You may not be giving it all of its right and its haq like you should, but at least you know that you're one of the musallim. Or do you prefer to be of those who have a wa'id shadeed? They're, they're, they're promised uh, with kufr. They're promised with the hellfire. They're promised that this is a sign of nifaq, of hypocrisy. So where do you want to stand? That's what you have to ask yourself. So he said, and if they do this, meaning if they follow this, this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the second pillar of Islam, which is the most important pillar of Islam after the shahadatain, meaning after tawheed, after aqidah. So if they follow you in that, if they acknowledge that and they follow you in that, then teach them, let them know that Allah the Almighty has commanded upon them to pay the zakat. And that it should be collected from the wealthy amongst them and distributed amongst the poor. And if they agree to you with this, 
then fear. So the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, فِيَّاكُوا كَرَائِمْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ So be careful of taking from the best of their, their property. Don't take from the cream of the crop necessary. And don't take from the worst of, the, of, of the, the, their property for zakat, but rather that wealth which is in the middle. And then the Prophet Sallallahu also warned he said, "What took it down to Methloom? He said, "In fear, the supplication of the one who's oppressed. For verily, between it and the law is no hijab, meaning there's nothing to stop the oppressed, and that even includes Ahlul Kufr, the people of disbelief. That if you are oppressing them, if you're oppressing anyone, and they supplicate against you." That's very serious. It shows you what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Adam. He loves the muqsiteen. He loves those who are just. And those are characteristics of Ahl Sunnah, of being just with the people, just with Ahl Bid'ah, just with your brothers and sisters, just with the non Muslims, just with every. If you practice justice, think of the picture of Islam that you would portray for the world. Think of the picture of Islam for those who are weak in Iman, how their Iman would become strengthened. Think of how even your enemies would have a greater respect and fear of you because you would be just and you would be aided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With taqa da'watul madhlum, fear the supplication of those people who are oppressed. So this, Abu <clears throat> Billah, is advice for all of us, but especially those tyrannical regimes of kufr and shirk and zandaka, the shayateen like Bashar al Asad and other demons who, thro who throughout time have oppressed humanity and have oppressed specifically Ahl Sunnah, causing them to flee from their homes, causing them to be of, uh, people of starvation and famine causing them to leave their wealth, their property, their children and their lives and sacrifice their lives and their properties and travel throughout the earth, make hijrah from their own lands, their lands which once that, that held signs of Islam, signs of Iman, but they had to leave it. Many of the people left to go to places of disbelief, begging for a, a, a sustenance, begging for assistance. So this shows us that we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear the Tao of the Mithloon. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from being those people who oppress others in any oppression and any sins that we've committed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us.